We live in a society where people are extremely quick to take offence when criticised, even if the criticism is fully justified. And this puts people in a, a very poor position to hear the invitation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, people often stop when they hear the criticism that the gospel necessarily brings with it, the criticism of our sin. Criticism that's actually deserved, criticism that we kind of know is deserved as well. But you see, any criticism at all, and our hackles are, are raised, our defences go up, we just say stop, we don't want to hear any more. Well, in James's sermon from Mark chapter 7 yesterday, he really emphasised the fantastic response of the Syrophoenician woman who was seeking Jesus' deliverance for her daughter. Rather than shutting down upon being offended by Jesus, as he just pointed out the truth, um, she was in an unfortunate position. She was a non-Jew. She was outside of the covenant that God had given to the Israelites. But, but rather than shutting down upon this offence, this woman responded with faith and with courage. She knew that Jesus could heal her daughter. She was confident that Jesus would heal her daughter. James finished up um, in his sermon with Martin Luther's conversion. And that was very apt because Martin Luther apparently loved this account in Mark 7. He saw it as a real picture of the gospel. See, this woman, she has no claim on Jesus whatsoever. She can't point to anything in her favour. There's no merit. There's no religious observance. There's nothing. She knows that in the eyes of the Jews... She is a Gentile dog and she accepts her position kind of willingly. She doesn't try to change her position. But then she doesn't need to change her position. Because with eyes and ears of faith, she recognises that standing in front of her is one who is filled not only with power, but also with compassion, one who would willingly share the crumbs from under his table with those who need them. The gospel message does sting. And it should sting because it doesn't sugarcoat the position that humanity have put themselves in in front of a holy God. We are dogs. We're wretches. We're enemies, we're, we are haters, we are idolaters, we're rebels. And yet in Jesus, we can approach the one who has both the power to sort out our sin and the love that causes him to do it. The cross of Christ, it should constantly put Christians into their proper position in front of Jesus. We should be on our knees in humble, grateful worship. See, our sin required that terrible and yet glorious sacrifice. And that is a sacrifice that means that the whole world can and should hear the gospel invitation ringing out from local churches in all the nations. Riverside Church Remember that we are dogs, but we're dogs who have been made into children of God by the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember that so that every day we come to Jesus in praise. Remember it so that every day we seek to live out our familyness as part of the family of God. Remember it so that the gospel is always on our lips. Remember it so that the offence that the gospel will bring with it will not stop us from declaring it to the folk around us whom we love so much, who we want to come and, and to be joined by Jesus into this great family of God. Well, let's finish with some words that we probably haven't heard now for a while. Words that I can't wait to be able to declare with you when we're in one another's presence, once again, gathering together as a local church. Listen carefully to these familiar words. We do not presume to come to this year table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, 
but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table. But you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Amen.